the Art and Industry of Business and Living podcast, discussing conscious choices around business, money, life and living and creating a greater future for you and the planet. Hey everyone, welcome to the Art and Industry of Business and Living. You're with Simone and uh, I'm super tired. It's been it's been an amazing tour and I'm in India at the moment in Mumbai, just finished a Choice of Possibilities class, heading home tonight. I know I'm going to pass out on the planes <laughs> after have a glass of champagne and pass out and sleep. So heading home to Australia, it doesn't stop there though. We have Choice of Possibilities class in Melbourne and Advanced uh, Body class in Noosa and uh, I will be at my house though so I'll be able to hear the beautiful sound of the ocean crashing against the rocks as I go to sleep, which I'm super grateful for. Uh, And I'm really grateful for everything. I just finished this Choice of Possibilities class in Mumbai, India, and the people are so grateful. I'm grateful for them, the changes that occurred and the demands that people are making of themselves. And I just... I just know that we changed a whole lot of stuff here, not just in India and on the entire planet. So grateful for that. And what we're going to do again is I did a book launch here for a relationship. Are you sure you want one? And Rebecca Hulse interviewed me for it. It was great. We're actually going to, we've got a video. We're going to put that up on my Instagram, cut little pieces of it. And, uh, and on the website relationship, are you sure you want one.com or you can go to relationships donedifferent.com. And uh, two weekends ago, I did a class in Mexico with Brendan Watt, two and a half day class. It was so good. It's, I am, I, even though I'm really tired, I'm just so grateful for everything that's been created in the world. And thank you to every single person out there who's choosing something greater, because that's actually what makes the changes in the world, the ones that I know I'm asking for. So a great process to run is What energy can I be and do today that would allow me to contribute to the planet? You can put anything in there. And everything at that is times a gazillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So enjoy the interview that we did at the book launch. It's following this. And please check out relationshipsdonedifferent.com and also Relationship, Are You Sure You Want One? Brilliant book. You can get it on Amazon. You can also get it on accessconsciousness.com. So enjoy and uh, please share this with your friends, your family, foe, whoever. (laughs) Thank you again to all of you for joining us on this amazing podcast. Thank you. Bye. So welcome everyone to the very exciting launch of a fabulous book by a wonderful lady and a great friend of mine, Simone Millicent, and not here, Brendan Watt. This is Relationship. Are you sure you want one? Thank you. It's a question. It is a question. (laughs) And it's a book that hopefully will leave you in question for the rest of your life. So um, I've had the pleasure of actually being, hearing what you've been saying and writing as this book got written. And it was was such a, a wonderful journey to see you both go through. So for me, I would I would like to know like you've been around for a while. I've been I've been you've around been, the you've block. You've known us for a long time, yeah. <laughs> yes, and so I've seen the you know the relationship behind the book. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Not in the bedroom, not, just behind I'm, the scenes. I was not there. I can say I was not there. Um. So why write this book? Well, Brandon Watt and myself we travel around the world doing classes and seminars, mm-hmm. etc. And. Um, working with Access Consciousness. And one of the questions we always got asked was about relationship. Yeah. It's like so many people would ask us, you know, how we're creating our relationship, what tools we're using, etc. And uh, one of the things I'm going to say is for eight years, Brendan and myself were in a relationship and we used the tools of Access Consciousness. We would not be where we are today if we hadn't used the tools. And sometimes it's quite confronting when you use these tools because you want everything to go your own way. (laughs) Like most people want everything to go their own way. That's not how relationship works. Relationships should be about a contribution. So we had so many people asking us questions about how we created our relationship. So then we did a class on it and thought, let's put it into a book. So it's quite confronting 
there's uh, it's quite vulnerable. There's a lot Very of vulnerable. a lot of stories that yeah. we tell about each other that we're like, oh, why not? It's like there's what if there was nothing to hide? So we tell a lot of stories about how we created it, and it's like some funny antidotes, hopefully to you know create some more ease for you, so that you can create. If you're going to create a relationship, create a good one. You don't have to have one, but if you're going to create one, create a great one. And I love, like, what a great start to the beginning of this book. So you've actually got a quote by Gary Douglas, the founder of Access here, and it says, don't look for what will make you happy. Be happy just for the fun of it. Yep. Simple, huh? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what this, this book is, is, and it has been for me reading it and for so many of the people that have read it around the world, is that this is not designed to be a complicated manual nope. or a how-to. It's, it's designed to be fun. It's designed exactly. to make you laugh. Yeah. I mean, even looking at the cover, like, yeah, it's a comic. <laughs> it's designed to make you go, hmm, what's actually going on here for me? And so, one of the things that I wanted us to to look into here is, you know, your first chapter is, I expected to be single forever. Mm-hmm. So, how did you end up in a relationship for eight years if you thought you were going to be single forever? Good question. <laughs> I I was definitely one of those people who looked at relationship and I couldn't see a good one around me mm. um, like my parents didn't have like this you know great glorious relationship that I was like oh I must have that it's like and I couldn't see anyone around me that had a great one so my point of view was why would you do one why would you have a relationship if you didn't if you didn't um, if you couldn't have something good like it was always it wasn't this contribution to each other so I chose well, I decided, I went to answer and I went to conclusion that I actually wouldn't be in a relationship. I wouldn't choose to have a relationship. And it's what I call like the no choice universe. Um, you know, say if you're going to be a vegetarian, which I know there's a lot of vegetarians out here in India, but if you're going to be a vegetarian and every day you say, I'm a vegetarian, what if instead, because you've just created this no choice universe, what if instead, I'm not saying you have to go eat meat, but you woke up every day and went, oh, I prefer not to eat meat. Okay, so it becomes a choice. And what I was doing is going, I don't do relationship. I don't do it, I'm not gonna do it. And I had created this no choice universe rather than every day waking up and looking at, okay, so does this work for me today? Would I like to create something? And when I realized I had this no choice universe, that's the moment that I went, ah, you know what? I'm limiting myself. So how many of you are limiting yourself by creating a no choice universe in any area of your life? So then I made the demand that if something showed up that was of a contribution to me, then I could choose it. But before I was like, no, not choosing it. Yeah, yeah, not doing it, not doing it, absolutely not. Which is so conclusion, so filled with, you know, answer and limitations rather than the question of, all right, so if something shows up that's gonna be a contribution, I could choose it. So then how did relationship, um, how did Brendan in a relationship show up? Well, I actually met him at an Access Consciousness class. <laughs> and uh, in actually, how this occurred, I was having, I was in Sydney, Australia, and I was having a conversation with Gary Douglas. And it's one of the tools that we talk about in the relationship done different class as well. And I was saying to him that I wanted, I was attracted to this certain guy in the class, and I was like, I want to, you know, have sex with this guy. And um, Gary looked at me and he went, why do you want to have sex with this guy? And I went, oh, because blah, 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 blah. You know, all my reasons and justifications. Mm-hmm. And Gary said, he's an asshole. And I was like, yeah, he's <laughs> lovely. He's awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. And anyway, Gary being Gary and me being me, we started having this conversation about it. And we, what we got to was I was looking at anyone who judged me and my body and didn't want to have sex with me was what you would call a winner. Someone that was like, yes, if I can get them, then I've won, you know, and I'm sure nobody else has done this. And he said to me, <laughs> and he said to me, why don't you, he said, what about this person or this person or this person? You know, they would, they would love to have sex with you. And I was like, no. And I was like, and he went, why not? And I was like, well, they're like losers. And he was like, how are they losers? <laughs> and what we got to was if anyone actually desired me or desired to have sex with me, yeah. I put them in this loser category. And then... So we realized we, I was creating this winner category, this loser category. You can see how I'm in the computation, right? Yeah, not at all. So this winner and this loser. And then and he said, so what's this person, this person, this one? And I was like, oh, they're just like, eh, you know, like no counts. 
And he's like, what's a no count? And I was like, well, someone who's not here and they're not here. Right. And actually, I have two friends of mine who, when they heard this story, what they did, they were very smart. And this is about, I don't know, six years ago. They looked around the room and literally went, who's a no count? And they looked around the room and the girl went over to the guy and said, do you want to go get a drink? And they're still together today. Wow. So looked around the room and went, who's the no count? Like, who's someone that you've decided is a no count? So that's your homework if you want to do it, <laughs> is look around and see who's a no count and go ask them for a drink. Go over coffee, a tea, a glass of wine or something. So anyway, um, Gary actually said to me, you should, um, you should hook up with Brendan Watt. And I said, why? And I mean, I thought he was nice, he, you know, he was, he was nice guy. He was cute, he was whatever, he was yeah. a nice guy. And um, he said, because you'll find out what it's like to be with someone who's kind, caring and nurturing and who is in that no count category. So of course I did my homework because I'm a good girl. <laughs> and, uh, and then eight years, like we spent eight years together. So that's, that's how it got created. From, right from the very beginning, the seed of consciousness was with using the Access Consciousness Tools by Gary Douglas. Which are in this book. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And so this is amazing. I mean, I've loved reading this book because it's everything that I've seen you guys experience on paper mm -hmm. for everyone not to read, like as entertainment, but to be able to take on what would work for them from this and to use these tools to create something greater for themselves, which I, I know is what you and Brendan are about. You desire everyone to have something greater if they would like to choose it. We do, definitely. And so for me, this book is one of the guidebooks about some of the sticky topics in relationship. Like you've got one in here, which is literally called, Who's Paying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure is not a, a topic in anyone else's relationship. Because it's one of the things that we tend to use to lock ourselves up the most. So what were some of the tools or things that you recall that you'd like to use? Well, we were, we, we had an unusual relationship as well as like, I was, um, well, still am, I, that hasn't changed, but 11 years older than Brendan. Mm -hmm. um, he had a kid, a dog, you know, had all this, uh, you know, baggage that came along as well. And it's not, you know, it wasn't sort of like, oh, this is my dream man. It's like, you know, he was also hugely in debt, which I didn't find out until we bought our first house. And then he said to me, oh, by the way, I'm about $200,000 in debt. And I was like, ah, oh, isn't that something you tell someone before you buy a house with them? And he looked at me and he went, oh, I didn't think about it. And I was like, okay, so we actually had to deal with his debt together. And I was earning a lot more money than what he was earning. Mm. And, you know, society, this reality, everything says the man is supposed to go and make money and look after the family, etc. Okay? And the woman is meant to stay at home and look after the kids and cook and clean, etc. and all that. So what I would like to ask is how many of you women, does that sound like fun, or how many of you women want to go out and conquer the world? Yeah, so nearly every single person in the room, woman, put their hands up. <laughs> and then there's a lot of men also who, that's not what they enjoy either, going out and being the breadwinner and looking after everyone. A lot of men are great nesters. Mm. It's like they actually like to stay at home and create this nest. So we sort of flipped a lot of things as well. And uh, I would be the one, you know, chopping around and doing most of the work and earning a lot of the money. But Brendan would stay at home and he was like he would cook these amazing meals like he was in the you know top 100 for master chef in australia like he's a fabulous cook so i would be there with my computer and my glass of wine and brendan would be you know cooking dinner and and looking after me and contributing in a different way mm. and we also did all these renovations on our house and he was the one that took care of it all and made sure that everything was okay so what you want to look for as well in a great relationship is these are three things you need okay Make sure they're good in bed, literally. Important. Important. <laughs> and then the second thing is let them do whatever the hell they want and, and, you, and they should let you be able to do whatever you desire, okay? And then number three is contribute financially. And contribute financially, like I said, doesn't necessarily mean both, you know, putting in, you know, a paycheck equivalent and putting it into the same bank account. It could be that one of them, male or female, is going out and earning the majority of the money but the other person is a contribution to you being able to do that and be that mm. so what if it wasn't about who's paying as in 
you know, it has to be this way, this reality says, what if you could actually create it yourself? And as long as it's honoring for both of you, yeah. it's like, choose that. And what a different way to create a relationship. It is. <laughs> Hugely different. Yes, it is. Because yeah. a lot of people, um, a lot of people have a projection about relationship. A lot, you know? Yes. And the expectations of what it should be. It's like, how many of your, you know, your family project and expect at you of what you should be in relationship, of what you should do in relationship, rather than question you and, and allow you to create whatever it is you desire. So maybe this book can be your new family to empower yes. you. Yes, to... we've got you. <laughs> we do. We've got your back. Brenda exactly. and I have got your back. Relationship. Are you sure you want one? <laughs> Well, one of the things that you mentioned in this when you were talking about the the money piece was the contribution. And that's that's actually been a topic that we've been coming up a lot with in Access Consciousness recently. And I just slipped up into a page where Brendan has said, be kind to yourself if you go back to your old ways as I periodically did, which I thought was, was fun. But what contribution were you choosing for each other? And, uh, I'm going to say one of the greatest gifts that we were for each other and still are. And the thing is, like, we were together for eight years and, you know, we did all this media and that and they were saying, oh, so you think you're relationship experts? No, we don't. It's like, we've just been there, done that. We've chosen really bad relationships, <laughs> like really bad. And then we've also chosen great relationships. Yeah. And now we are uncreating our relationship just as good as what we created it. So I'm going to say when we were in relationship and also as we've chosen to um, uncreate the relationship, it's been a constant place of honoring of each other and not judging what the other person is choosing, being an allowance of what the other person is choosing. And like we've never had a fight, ever. Never had a fight, never had an argument. And That's someone, amazing. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> and someone said to me, a family member of mine said, you guys are just weird. And I was like, we're weird because we haven't fought? It's like, why would you think that relationship is built around, you know, fighting and arguing? What so, would you like to choose? Yeah, yeah. it's like we never had a fight, not even when we broke up, like broke the relationship up. We still haven't fought. It's like, it was always a question, always an honoring of like, what's going to work for him, what's going to work for me? And we're both willing to have that and be that together. I love that. That's cool. Um, you said just before, being an allowance of each other. How do you do that? How do you be an allowance of each other? Yeah. You just choose it. You choose like, it. Yeah. And like, don't judge the other person for something that they're choosing. Like, let me give you an example. If um, uh, there was early on in our relationship, uh, and I know I was talking about this today in class as well, is that. I was, you know, I wake up, I wake up happy and wake up creating. Morning is my best time you can get me. And I was, you know, in the house and I'm creating and, you know, talking to people and blah, 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 working on different projects. And Brendan was, you know, depressed and he was being sad. And a great tool for that is who does this belong to? But he wouldn't use it. <laughs> so also he wasn't using that tool, but I wasn't getting cranky at him for not using that tool. It was like being an allowance. I would ask him, okay, so is there anything up? Can I do something for you? No, I'm fine. Okay, cool. Leave him. And then go about my day. And then he eventually said to me, will you stop being so happy? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, do you know how hard it is to live in a house with someone who walks around and you're happy all the time and creating? And I'm trying to be sad and depressed. And when he said that, we both started laughing. And he was like, God, that sounds insane. And I was like, mm, it, maybe it is insane. <laughs> but I was in allowance of what he was choosing. I yeah. wasn't every day. And I see so many women do this too. Uh, they try and fix the man that they're with. He's not asking to be fixed. He's not asking to be trained. If you want to train someone, get a puppy, okay? <laughs> so you have to allow them to be them. And men and women function in a very different way too. It's like a lot of the times men, um, men will like to, you know, like play video games or, you know, read a newspaper or read a book or watch movies or just sit there watching TV for a while to process whatever it is that they're changing and what they're going through. They don't want to share. Men aren't like, hey, can I share with you today for hours on end? That's women. Women like to share. Yes. So if you're a woman and you want to share, get a girlfriend and share with your girlfriend. One of the most fearful things in the world for a man to hear is, you know, can we talk? Can we chat? And a man's like, holy shit, what's up? What did I do wrong? Exactly. Yeah, so you've got to recognize just because you're choosing to be together, it doesn't mean you, you know, if you're a man and a woman, I mean, of course you've got woman and woman relationships and man and man. Yes. If you're a man and a woman, recognize who that person is and be an allowance of what they're choosing 
and when they don't desire to share I see so many times that a woman will take a press on me and they start to go oh my god what did I do wrong did I do something wrong is it my fault is it my no it's not your fault the man just requires a little bit of space hence the saying man cave you know, guys have all heard of man cave you know and when we moved into the house that we bought there was this room that we weren't quite sure what to do with it and I was thinking in the back of my head I could make a nice office with that you know and then you know we were looking at different things maybe for you know our my stepson that he could do something and then I also realized that at that time too Brennan really required his space and I said what if you have a man cave and it blew his paradigm because his previous relationship if he had suggested having a man cave uh, she would have just lost it and thought it was against her that you need to have time away from you, you need to do this. And it's like, no, you need to give people space. Yes. So we actually did create a man cave for him and he spent so little time there, <laughs> like five minutes, like every two weeks or something. And then eventually went, you know what, I don't think I need a man cave. And I was like, okay, but he had the choice. And that's also the place of being an allowance, being an allowance of what someone requires and what they desire and don't judge it, allow it. Nothing is personal, okay? It's not against you, what they're choosing. That's such a great line. Mm. That's awesome. And on the topic of sharing, there's an entire chapter in here on is sharing caring? So that can be something, I know for, for me, I'm very good at talking. So I definitely love that chapter of going, right, this is how you can create a different way to be with the guy when you want to talk all the time. So that one was it, very helpful a, for a, me. A, a, great, a great tool just for anyone being in a relationship yeah. too is ask them questions. Yeah. Like don't sit there and talk about you all the time. It's like ask them questions. You become one of the most appealing people in the world when you ask them questions. Mm. Because people actually desire to talk about themselves and they desire to, you know, have that instead of someone coming in going blah, 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 blah <laughs> about themselves. It's like that's really boring. It's like ask someone questions about themselves. Get to know them. You have a story in the book about a time where you really didn't want to ask Brendan questions, but you did it anyway. I don't know if you remember this story. I do remember story. this okay. story, because I think if this is the one that you're talking yes. about. Uh, we, the house that we had is across the road from the beach in yep. Australia, in Pridgeon Beach. And I was cranky at Brendan, and I don't even know what for. Like, that's how relevant that piece was. And I went across to the beach, and I'm walking on the beach, and I was like, rah, 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 you know. And, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, rang me. Happened timing, perfect timing, you know. <laughs> and he rang me and he was like, what's up, what's going on? And I was like, blah, 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 you know, about Brendan. And he said, you know what you need to do? And I said, what? And he said, you need to go home and you need to make everything about him. And I was like, make everything about him? I want him to make everything about me. It's like, <laughs> how many times do you want the other person to make everything about you? This tool, I didn't want to do it, but I also realized every other access consciousness tool I had used worked. Yes. So I went, all right, suck it up and I'm going to do this, <laughs> you know. And so I walked back in the house and I started making everything about him. And in that, it was like just asking him how he was, got what's going on for him, it's like, you know, and um, acknowledging him, acknowledging different things about him, etc. I'm not kidding, within 10 minutes, he was like, honey, what would you like me to cook for dinner you know can I you know can I get you a drink you know but and was making about me and I was like wow was like, this stuff actually really works it was mind-blowing so make it about make it about the other person you walk in and do that tonight okay when you go home tonight it's like make it about the other person don't tell them you're doing it like don't walk in and say I'm gonna don't make this all about you secrets. yeah don't give away your secrets and it's like all your manipulation skills here <laughs> But start making it all about them and see what energy gets created, okay? Just play with these tools. And there's a lot of tools in this book too that literally is about that play. And if there's a tool, if you get this book and you read it and there's something you resist in it, that's the tool you need to use, okay? That's the tool that will probably create the greatest freedom for you. I'm loving this. I hope you guys are loving this conversation as much as I am. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm having like... Well, no. <laughs> it's one of the things, Rebecca, I see is the amount of people who go, oh, I really want a relationship, I really want a relationship, and they're single, and say, if you're single, that's what you actually would like to create. Yeah. Like, whatever you've created right now, if you're in a relationship, you desire a relationship. If you don't want a relationship, you actually don't want one. So, and people are always like, oh, no, you know, I mean, I've had girlfriends who are like, 
they do everything they can to find the one. I'm going to give you some breaking news tonight. You ready? Yes. There is no the one. What? Okay. There is no the one. There's some amazing, adorable, awesome people in the world who will be a contribution to you. But you please do not wait for you know the man to come riding along on the white horse and the knight in shining armor to come and collect you up and save you. Okay? There is no the one. And what if we're not meant to mate for life as well? I know I'm in India talking about that, but what if we're not meant to mate for life? It's like, you know, we're not penguins. Okay? <laughs> You're not a penguin. <laughs> and if you don't know, penguins mate for life. I didn't know that before someone said that. But you know what? They do mate for life, but they're smart because they actually mate, and then the woman will stay there with the eggs until they hatch, but the man goes off for ages. So they've got it down. It's yeah. not like they're living in this same area the whole time. It's like, you know, the woman's like, bye. hey, I'm gonna look after these eggs. And the man's like, all right, bye. And he goes <laughs> off for ages to get food, etc. So they have a lot of space between them. I mean, how many times if you're in a relationship have you decided, now we will do everything together? You know, everything. It's like, do you actually want to do everything with somebody else? Start to have a look at how many hours a day would be fun for you to spend with someone. I mean, for me, it's like to spend one hour, like a great hour with someone is awesome. But I've got too many other things to create. I've got too many other things to do. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not looking to spend 24 hours a day with somebody. One hour a day, one mm. great hour a day is awesome. So have a look at how many hours a day would you actually like to spend with someone. Like get real about what it is that you're asking for. And that's so much of the tools in the book too. Because it's relationship, are you sure you want one? Or do you want to start chopping off your limbs so that you can be like, oh look, now I can be with you because I've cut off parts and pieces of me. Someone's not looking to be in a relationship with someone who's cut off parts and pieces. They might actually find, you know, like you for who you be. What? So don't try and be somebody else to be in a relationship. Exactly. It's like when Peter something, you know, be you. Be you, change the world. Exactly. Another great book by Dr. Dane here. <laughs> um, so as I was, um, cramming your book earlier mm -hmm. because I wanted to remember everything that I read the first time. Didn't quite succeed on that, but you had a little thing in the end towards random acts of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And um, Brendan said to you, I wish you could see how great you are through my eyes. And I just thought I would bring up that energy for us. And so you quit cry. <laughs> <laughs> made me cry. Uh, this entire book actually made me cry the first time I it, but I just thought that what a great energy to have in your relationship. Yeah, it's like what if you could, because how often do you judge yourself? Almost like, all the time. Yeah, I mean yeah. how many of you even today woke up and you had this litany of judgments of you and your body, mm -hmm. of everything, of the money you have or you don't have, your business, your body, your health, your whatever. It's like your family, your relationships, your sex life, all of it. You've gone into this huge amount of judgment and you may just be with somebody or choose to be in a relationship with someone who actually, like I said before, likes you for you. So what if you could, like, that's another bit of homework you can do, okay? <laughs> Is start to look at you through their eyes and see what they see. A lot of you may actually be with someone, a friend of mine sitting in the front row, I'm pretty sure is, that is with someone who doesn't judge them. So look at you through their eyes and see if you start to see something different. What if you stop judging you? That would be a great start. I mean, relationship, are you sure you want one too? We wrote the book too so that you could be in question. That it's not a necessity, it's a choice. Your whole entire life should be a choice. It shouldn't be a necessity. It should be a choice. So ask, okay, is this actually what I desire? Or is there something else I desire? Like I have another friend of mine who you know, for years was went to the wrongness of her for not desiring a relationship. And yet the relationship she has with animals is off the charts. You know, if she could marry a horse or a dog, she would. <laughs> and but she's but now she's really happy. She's got horses, she's got dogs, she's and she's happy creating that as her life. So what are you happy creating as your life? And where are you not allowing yourself to have a choice? I love this. Um towards the beginning I wrote down this quote too of creating a great relationship requires a level of intimacy that very few people are willing to have, even with themselves, let alone anyone else. And 
to me, this conversation that we're having now is about intimacy on that deeper level. And I know in this book, you talk about intimacy in a different way to what other people talk about what intimacy is. Yes, we talk about the five elements of intimacy, and it's you know one of the tools in Access Consciousness. And five elements of intimacy is gratitude, honor, trust, vulnerability, and allowance. So what I actually started to do, because the other thing I realized when I was you know talking to Gary many years ago about you know being in a relationship, so many people look at somebody else to fulfill what they've just they decided they lack. It doesn't actually create a great relationship. Okay? You're looking to somebody else to fulfill what you've decided you lack. It doesn't create something great. Mm. So what if instead you had these five elements of intimacy with you first? So what I did, because I, you know, I think the OCD and you know autistic comes out in me, I wrote down on these little post-it notes and I put them on the mirror in my bathroom. And at the end of every day, I would look at all of these five elements of intimacy and I'd use the access consciousness clearing statement and I would pop and pod point of creation, point of destruction, everywhere that I wasn't willing to be these five elements of intimacy. So every day, and it wasn't like going into judgment, you know, you are an allowance of yourself today, you know, <laughs> you're bad, you're wrong. No, it was just every day before I went to bed. All right, so destroy and uncreate everywhere that I wasn't willing to be vulnerable with myself, where I wasn't willing to be trusting with myself. I wasn't willing to be honoring of myself. I wasn't willing to be an allowance of myself and wasn't willing to be grateful for myself. So I would destroy and uncreate everything that that is, right and wrong, good and bad, pop and pot on, in shorts, boys and beyonds, which allows you to come out of all the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the judgments, the limitations, the conclusions, and I know how much you guys love conclusions are in India. <laughs> so, but it puts you into questions so that you sort of, you know, have this blank slate, go to bed, wake up in the morning, and then, and then ask to be these five elements of intimacy with you. Because if you can be that with yourself, then you can have that with another. But if you're looking to find the answers in somebody else, it's not going to create a relationship that is a huge contribution to you. There'll always be uh, this distance. And the thing is, the word relationship actually means the distance between two things. What if we weren't creating a distance between somebody else? What if we were, we made up a word and it's called creationship. <laughs> and what if you actually asked to have a creationship? And a creationship is the, is the place where you, are, you create at least 20 times more with somebody choosing to be with them than you would alone. And that's one thing that Brenda and I did really well. Mm -hmm. It's like in so many different areas. Yes. Uh, a good friend of mine recently was saying to me, what you guys created in eight years financially is off the charts. Like you guys created more in eight years than most people create in a lifetime. So what we're also looking at is just because we desire to uncreate the relationship, we're not like destroying the entire thing. We're deconstructing it and looking at it going, okay, so what pieces work here? So, you know, meeting with our accountant, meeting with different, you know, people and looking at the different um, investments we have, the trust, the companies, etc., and looking at what we would still like to contribute with each other and create something even greater. So just because you, you know, you uncreate a relationship and you break the relationship up doesn't mean you have to destroy everything either. Okay? There's different choices. I know that what Brenda and I are creating on planet Earth now has never existed. <laughs> it's like it's it's it is. It's friggin' awesome. And I'm uh, I want to say proud of myself and proud of Brendan as well. Yeah. Because I get that we're sort of you know, thank you. <laughs> we're leading we're leading um, creating another you know pathway to create a different I'm sure. very grateful for that. I know that it hasn't always been easy. But no, it's not a bed of roses, as Cream would say. It's been no bed of roses. And yet, the moments that haven't been the easiest, uh, I, I'd say we've got through with ease. Like, yes. there was, and this was, there was one time when we, um, it was just after we chose to break up the relationship, and there's this energy where we were like, you know, not fighting, not arguing, just this separation. Yeah. So, Brendan said, let's, get a bottle of wine, because you need a bottle of wine, get a bottle of wine, and go sit down in the veranda. And we were willing to have World War III. We were, taught, we were like, okay, what's going on for you? What's going on for me? And we were willing just to like, like have this conversation, have a screaming match if necessary, whatever was required. And we sat out in the veranda and drank this bottle of wine and had one of the most intimate, 
kindest conversations I think we'd ever had. Because what we actually got to as well was how much we cared about each other. And you're gonna and, make me. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that we did, and it's a great tool if you are uncreating a relationship, is write down three things that you desire from the other person. Mm. And it took us a little while to do that. We didn't do that on that night. Um, but it took us a little while to look at it. And Gary gave us the tool, write down three things that you desire from each other. And I immediately went, oh, it's going to be things. Like, who gets the house? Who gets this? <laughs> you know, who gets the dog? You know, and it wasn't. What ended up occurring was, without us looking at each other's list, we didn't cheat. It's like, the top of our list was, we want to remain friends. We want to work on our friendship. And that was the first thing that was on the top of our list. So what if you looked at what it is that you are creating with another person and continue to create that no matter what, you know, what humps you come across and what you choose. It's an always, and that's the five elements of intimacy. It's always a continuous place of still honoring you. What an amazing conversation. Um, just quickly before we finish up this conversation, What's on this book for someone that already has a relationship? Um, create a greater one. Yeah. I mean, how many of you, it's sort of like, you know, people who have money in their bank account and it's like, do you want more money in your bank account? Or have you decided you've got it? Have you decided you've, you know, got the best of everything? What if you never had the best of everything and what if there was always another possibility available? So there will definitely be tools in this book if you are in a relationship, if you're not in a relationship, if you desire one, you don't desire one if you want to break up a relationship all of it and it is like we said before it's quite confronting and we tell those yes. stories so it's like hey here it is because <laughs> we our desire is that you guys also um, you know engage with the book and engage with the tools so that you can have something greater what if the whole world function from creationship and not the judgments and the limitations and conclusions of what relationship is in this reality what if we could create a different reality? You're gonna create your reality with relationship, creationship, what would you choose? And that's what we desire for you to have. All the tools in the world so that you can have a life of ease, joy, and glory. Like, yay. Well guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Simone. Thank you, Miss Rebecca Holtz. I've had a lot of fun. Cool. <laughs> and thank you, everyone. I know this. Relationship. Are you sure you want that? So I believe we still have a few copies up the back right Manor and Nina. So if you would like this book and you don't have it, you can have it here. And for all of those that are on Audio Live, you can go to Amazon, you can go to relationship, are you sure you want one.com. And I believe someone's up for signing some books. I am. And one day we'll have on audio, but at the moment we don't. You know, we tried to read it uh, one day and uh, we both just started crying. <laughs> it was like, all right, maybe we're going to read this book later. So it will come out on audio at some point, but at the moment, it's in the book. And Thank it's translated you. into a few different languages as well, so yes. which is very awesome. Exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you have a question, Roger? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to grab the mic, though? We have a mic. We have a mic. Awesome. So, um, so I'm in a, I work in a hospital. So there was someone uh, with whom I was in a relationship with. Uh, after we decided to end the relationship, in the we are in the same workplace, in the same hospital, it becomes very awkward to meet the same person after breakup. But how, like when I see you and Brendan, like after you guys have decided to, okay, we'll change things, still you guys have that honoring for each other right. and all that, like how do you have that same, you know, honor, care for someone who you've, with I, whom I've broken up with yeah. in there's a lot my workplace. Of, there's a lot in that and it's still that place of being in that five elements of intimacy and it's probably our PR agent is like, I think that's your second book <laughs> is what you're creating with it. And there's definitely times like that, you know, I looked at it and went, well, what would be the easiest thing? Oh, if I, if I didn't see him again. But that's, it's pretty unlikely that that occurs a lot of times. Like we have a lot of you know finances together. We have a stepson together. We're in business together. Um, we both you know work with Access Consciousness. So that's a priority to me. So if you look at what the priority is, it's like, do you want to create more ease? And then ask them too, what works for them? It's like, and sometimes, like there's a period of time where we weren't as close, but we also required to, I want to say almost like regroup with ourselves. And then we went, okay, so, we actually do like each other and we would like to 
honor each other. So what does that look like? So we've definitely been in question. We're still in question of what that is. I mean, I was, Brendan's in Argentina now. I was just talking to him like five minutes before I came on here. He's doing a class there. I'm doing a class here. And there's a contribution that we still be together. We just didn't decide to be in a relationship. So you've got to be in question. Okay. And ask what's going to work for you and what's going to work for them as well. Like, okay. is creating that separation, is that fun for you? Or would you actually like to be even more um, uh, vulnerable and create something different with them? So this is so different. Thank you very much it for is that. Really different. It's so because I see in my medical college, so the guys are a guy, a guy and girl date. When they are dating, they're so much in love. But after breakup, they block each other they or they spread. They hate each other. They know, hate each other. Like, they, huh? like they want to screw each other after breakup, or yeah. they just go to a different relationship to prove a point Crazy. that you know I've moved on. To, to they date someone else in order yeah. to prove a point. Such things happen after they decide to end. But what you're saying is a is it's a possibility where. You know, two, hum two humanoids or humans are able to still have yeah. honoring and all that. This but is you so. Have to, you have to choose it. It's like you have to like be the one that goes right. I'm going to create something different here because the normal thing in this reality is like what you described. We break up now. We hate each other. It's like I mean, I think there was um, Gwyneth Paltrow did a whole thing on unconscious coupling. Conscious and uncoupling. Sorry, yeah. Yes. Never, we've got <laughs> we've got conscious un. un We've got unconscious coupling done. Um, <laughs> no, say it again. Conscious, conscious, conscious uncoupling. uncoupling. Yeah, easy for me to say after a few weeks <laughs> on tour. Um, so, and Drew Barrymore also spoke about that too when she, you know, was divorced from her husband and she said everyone looked at them and went, yay, look at fairy tale lifestyle. She's finally got this man. She said, I can see how everyone looked at it and went, you know, yes, this is the most perfect relationship. But then we broke up and everyone thought we hated each other. Why do you remember the bitter? Why, what if you actually you know, remembered the sweet? You liked this person originally, so why do you have to hate them when you break the relationship up? So that's a different concept and it's a different reality and it's one that I know that myself and Brendan are here to create. So if you want to create that too, then I am I embrace that. It's like, let's do it. Let's create something different. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll take a couple more questions and then we'll... Um, so do we do a relationship? So right okay. Do we do a relationship or does it just happen? So you is create it. it. Nothing happens okay. to you. Nothing happens to you. You create everything. You create your life as it currently is. So you create it. So uh, what do you have to say about uh, when we do a relationship when we are not in a relationship? When you do a relationship when you're not in a relationship. So when I do a relationship with someone who is actually not in a relationship with me. Yeah, one side. It's not a relationship. That's a fantasy. So you might want to come out of fantasy land. It's like, and I see a lot of people do that too. They always strive to be in somebody, to be with somebody who doesn't desire to be with them. Okay, you might want to ask a question. What do I love about, you know, desiring to be with this person who doesn't desire to be with me? Oh, maybe that's your reason justification but not creating a relationship, okay? You don't want to create a fantasy. Fantasies aren't real. What if you actually started to create what it is that it, you, you can in your life and a different reality, okay? Cool. Um, Simone, you spoke yeah. about conscious uncoupling. What if... Not, um, not, I also spoke about unconscious, unconscious coupling, whichever okay. we decided everyone's got yeah. that down. Uh, yes. So I want to speak about <laughs> conscious uncoupling. So uh, I have read your book and it's phenomenal and uh, I vouch by all access consciousness tools. Uh, what if there is a couple where one is conscious and the other is not choosing, will conscious uncoupling still work and um, how? Yeah, because it's the, it's the same thing as like the five elements of intimacy like we spoke about. It's being, one of them is being an allowance. So you don't have to go, I'm an allowance, you should be an allowance, you know. It's not, not about demanding that of the other person. If you're being that, you become an invitation for someone else to be that. If someone is desiring to, you know, fight and argue with you, but you're not fighting back, they've got nowhere to go. So work on you. This is not about demanding that somebody else uses the tools of access. It's like they might not desire to use the tools. You can still create a great relationship. You can still create a great, you know, undestroy, like destroying, destroying and uncreating the relationship if you're breaking it up. You can still do that for you. 
the tools will still work the tools will still work for me yeah yeah i mean if i am there and there's somebody else so if i'm being conscious and using the tools it'll work for me and the other person if he, he or she is not using the tools um what will the space be there well you're trying to look for the conclusion and an answer rather than mm, actually allowing that yeah, to show I'm, up yeah i'm i'm trying to go there before i have even started yeah 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 and how many of you try to go there before you've even started yeah. with everything yes <laughs> never think that is time to go tell them we destroy and uncreate it yeah. this is so All vested right. i'm getting back pack and put on and show us boys and beyond Thank you. Thank you so much everyone. Yes, thank you everyone. Thank And, you so uh, much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Becker.